and good day, and thank you for joining us here on Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit. The man sitting next to me is the only person I know who knows how many sides a dodecahedron has. His name is Mike Roth. And again, if I told everybody this, they would know the information, and uh. then they would be able to use it. And I, I can't divulge that information. I'm just going to have to tell you, yes. You, yes, you I don't do want know. people using that information for evil. No. Yeah. Just let it. It's it's a secret. There, there. That's how I'm gonna <laughs> get away with not telling you. <laughs> it's a secret. I'm surprised you knew the word. I mean, don't really. I've been trying to keep that a secret for so long. Yeah. I kind of blend into the set today. Yeah, Look you this. do. I'm like part of the chair. <laughs> I just <laughs> wait until someone comes in and sits in your lap. You right. can say, "Ho ho, I'm not a chair." I'm not a chair. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> We have got a couple of movies on the marquee this week, but first, we have to welcome in our newest affiliate, Channel 191 in the city, city of Laramie TV, Channel 191. Thank you for having us. Thank you for showing real reviews. Uh, most importantly, um, yeah. we should mention this is in Wyoming. Wyoming, Laramie, yeah. Wyoming. Laramie, Wyoming. Now, every time we welcome in a new affiliate, yes, I turn to you for a fact about this place. Tell yeah. me something about Laramie, Wyoming. Well, yeah, besides, you know, the, the major things, like mm -hmm. it's a home of 30,000 people, Ooh. and it has uh, three colleges, uh, the University of Wyoming, a Wyoming Technical Institute, and it's a branch of the uh, Laramie County Community College. All right. Um, educated folk out there. We also, uh, this is uh, was a setting for um, the TV series from ABC, um, Lawman, which aired Ooh. between... Um, 1958 and 62, if you remember sure. that. Oh, I remember it well. <laughs> a young lad oh. sitting on my pappy's knee watching Lawman. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it has a great college. It looks like there's a museum that has 50,000 catalogs of uh, mineral rocks and fossil specimens. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just it was uh, 2011. Um, one of the best cities to retire from. I Monday saw that, actually. Game. I stumbled across that today. Um, I also read a little bit of something about uh, the first woman voter, but I also hear claims from other uh, places. Controversy. So I, I, I don't want to get into this uh, controversy mm, He said, she said. I'm staying out All of we it. know is we are glad to be uh, on Channel 191 in Laramie, Wyoming. We love it. Uh, if you want to see us, uh, and you live in Laramie, you can watch us Tuesdays at 1.30, Fridays at 6.30 p.m., or Saturdays at 10 a.m. Welcome, There's... and thank you for having us. We do well, enjoy we're it. We're not a good 10 a.m. show. I think we're more of a... Yeah, yeah. 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 We're maybe a, a 10 a.m. like an Irish coffee show. Yeah, yeah. You, know, that, you wake that's... up and you just need to... And as always, uh, we put it out there, if, you, if uh, the city of Laramie, Wyoming wants to bring us out, Throw, yes. throw a parade. We'd be more than happy to grand marshal the parade for they, the city of Wyoming. They do have a festival July 10th um, celebrating the statehood of Wyoming. July 10, so, going to Wyoming. There we go. It is done. All right. Uh, moving on, let's take a look at what is on the marquee this week. So, first movie on the marquee this week. It's kind of a big movie. Yeah. Kind of a record-breaking movie. It, it is. A movie that is already nearing half a billion dollars as we speak. Yeah. and pretty, May have surpassed it as we spoke. Even had a little controversy before then, and then silly. just became silly. Silly. Uh, the movie, of course, I'm talking about is Beauty and the Beast, the newest Disney live action transfer uh, from director Bill Condon. Uh, we, I mean, we basically have the story of Beauty and the Beast that you know from their '91 animated movie. Uh, you have Emma uh, Watson playing Belle, uh, and her father uh, Maurice, played by Kevin Klein, um, and there's. Through hook or by crook, I don't want to go beat, through beat by beat through the story, but mm -hmm. um, she is being pursued by Gaston, played by Luke Evans. He wants to marry her. He is the the handsome man in town. He wants to marry her. She wants better things. Yeah. She's the weird girl in town because she likes to read. And the townsfolk say, what a weirdo. Um, <laughs> uh, she ends up at the Castle of the Beast looking for her father, who has gone missing. The Beast takes her captive and... Uh, I mean, it's it's the princess story. Somebody needs to kiss somebody to yeah. transform. And uh, you have uh, Dan Stevens as the title character, The Beast. And he and Belle maybe fall in love. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, 
You also have a whole host of characters, uh, of great actors playing the uh, all the anthropomorphic uh, objects, the clock, the the uh, the cup, the all chip, all, all of yeah. these, all the characters that you know from the animated, and a couple extra ones. Um, and it's, I mean, it's it's basically a Beauty and the Beast story with some twists that they t- they didn't follow beat for beat, which I kind of liked. I, I, I think. Uh, what you did, what you said uh, originally, uh, would translate this movie perfectly. It is a transfer to live action. Yeah. A, a lot of this movie is exactly the same: same jokes, same songs, same lines. They do add a little bit to it, but it's really not enough where you could say, "Wow, this was entirely different." Right? Story. No, it's not entirely different. They did. No. They added some songs. They added some characters. Uh, the credenza is a new character. Yeah. Um, they gave one of the things I really liked is they gave. Um, her dad, played by Kevin Klein, kind of f- gave him more to do in this than in the original. Yeah. Uh, fleshed his character out a little bit more. Also filled in the gap about what happened to her mom, which was unexplained in the 91 version. This one, you get an explanation, and that kind of fills in some gaps, I guess. Yeah. Um, and one extra song, I think, by A couple the extra Beast. songs. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. yeah. The one by The Beast I actually really enjoyed. I've been listening yeah. to it. That was all right. That yeah. was all right. Um, I didn't think it... Uh, was better than the original songs that they played. Um, it was, you know, the original score was fantastic. Absolutely. Disney, back in the 90s, had a nice spree of, like, three movies that soundtracks were just phenomenal. They were all award-winning, uh, fantastic stuff. I, I think it was a good idea for them to explore the idea of recreating, or not recreating, re uh, telling yeah. the story of Beauty and the Beast, but... I don't think they took a leap forward like they did with Mel- Maleficent. But, 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 or... but Maleficent wasn't off her own story, really. She was, a, you know, a secondary character in a, in a movie. Yeah. So she had a whole story that you could tell that was different. Or in Jungle Book, which was a pretty much the same, but yeah, I think the technical aspects of that movie and some of the songs I thought was better than the original. Yeah. I, I, where in this case, when Emma Watson is singing and stuff, I mean, she did a great job. I'm not going to say she's a bad singer, but compared to the originals, I preferred the originals. All right. I, um, one of the things is you have your villains of Gaston, played by Luke Evans, who I liked him as the narcissistic, he, dastardly heel, he, he did real fanta- mustache twirler. Yep, he did a fantastic job. I thought he was um, really good. I think uh, Josh Gad as uh, LaFeu. Yeah. Well, it did a fantastic job. He was uh, genuinely funny. Um, yeah, his his he has this kind of playful charm about him that kind of came out. Uh-huh. And yeah, I liked his character quite a bit. It's difficult to try to beat out Angela Lansbury as the Miss Potts. Yeah, but I think um, um, they Emma did Thompson. a good job. Emma Thompson did. A She's great perfect. Job. I, I yeah, she is a great replacement for Angela Lansbury, and she is a big part of the Disney universe with finding with saving Mr. Banks a few years ago. Uh-huh. Um, she's she's in the Disney. Where I can see her just kind of being part of this for a while. Yeah, she was great. I mean, all of them. Stan, getting Stanley Tucci and Ian McKellen and Ewan McGregor. I mean, mm-hmm. they had some great uh, actors to be the voice actors of the of the objects. Um, what did you think of the Beast? Dan Stevens playing the Beast. I mean, the the look, the the feel, everything with the Beast. Um, I don't think technically they were too snuff to do a character that was this detailed, all CG pretty much. But Dan Stevens as a voice actor, as a singer, I think they did a great job. Um, I, I, I would say, to me, everybody did really great or even excelled over the original for acting except for the main character. Mm, I, I, I disagree. I thought Emma Watson was terrific. I, I like I Emma I really, Wa- really enjoyed her in this. I liked Emma Watson, but I just didn't like her better than mm. the animated or the voice acting or when it came down to singing. I think the original Belle, they probably looked for someone who could do the voice better where for live well, action you have to get someone who can do the action. You need to actions. pair both. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, my problem with the Beast is I wished he was more beastly. I was hoping he would be a little more ferocious. Um, and he kind of wasn't. He was kind of a tame beast. Um, I was kind of hoping for a little more. I thought that the, the CG on it was, was 
pretty decent. I think the there were some rough edges here and there. The frame rates of certain scenes, yeah. um, but like the like dancing scene, the I thought looked great. Yeah, you know, and that is your showcase scene, mm -hmm. um, and so I thought that looked really good, and, and they worked well together. I thought a lot of the the music and the choreography, like. The choreography with the townsfolk and the people in the castle thought that looked really good. The castle was phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, it just, it looked like it took a creative team an entire lifetime to create just this castle. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. Um, it, it was dark and soft, and it was just a lot of combination. I, I was impressed with the castle scene. Yeah. Um, there were some scenes like... Uh, the snowball scene and the soup scene where you, they were lifts from the cartoon, mm -hmm. but it didn't quite translate well with the right. CG. Yeah. Um, I know they wanted their beast to, of course, look like he could actually be alive, not an animated character, but it, it, some of these jokes it's just... Tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's a tough. tough line to walk. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I enjoyed it fairly well. Well, good. Yeah. What did you end up giving Beauty and the Beast? I, I gave it 3.5. I thought it was really good. I spent most of my time comparing this to the animated cartoon. I think that kind of flubbed it down a little bit for me. Um, I don't know how I'd compare it if I saw both movies with fresh eyes. Sure. Um, but 3.5 is what I gave it. All right. Um, I gave it Four stars. Uh, it says three, but it's actually four. Uh, <laughs> there we go. Four stars. Wow, you're magic. Yeah, you that's pretty boop. good. Uh, um, yeah, I, I give it four stars. I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. This is um, this is up there with Jungle Book. is my favorite of these movies, of these Disney still, live actions. I still sing the Christopher Walken, I Want to Be Like You. Yeah. It, it's but you know what? They've had a nice run yeah. now, and now I'm excited where they're going forward. Like, yeah, Little Mermaid, absolutely. Dumbo, I'm on board. Yeah. Because you, they stumbled out of the blocks. I thought Cinderella wasn't great. No. Um, but, you know, in, in the Alice in Wonderland movies, I'm not going to get started on. But they've really started building steam. Yeah. And it's Disney. they got money to throw at these things. Yeah, they do. So. And, and what else can you do? I mean, you really. These uh, reboots, they're just... They're loving it. Hollywood loves them. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay, what do you have next on the marquee, sir? Um, I have the Belko Experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, director uh, Greg McLean, he creates a movie, that, uh, uh, and also written by James Gunn, um, a movie about 80 employees all in this one building, uh, the Belko, I believe. It's uh, all located in uh, Bogota, Colombia. Um, these guys work there for a year. They're bringing in new people. You got 80 people all in this building, all about to start their productive day, and then boom, what happens? The whole thing gets sealed up by this uh, metal that people are not aware of how it works. It can't be cut, can't they be... They got adamantium yeah, on the it's, building. Yeah, pretty much adamantium <laughs> or uh, vibranium yeah. uh, walls. They can't get out, and a voice comes over the loudspeakers saying, you need to kill two people within a half hour, otherwise bad things are going to happen. Well, immediately when people hear something like this, they don't go, let's go killing. They doubt it. They start thinking, oh my gosh, what could this be? Very soon do they find out that this is no joke, that they have uh, little devices in their head that explode if they don't do what they are fitted to do. Um, it's a frantic... Uh, a typical story of something of this nature is do you become the killer or do you become the pacifist and say, you know what, I'm a human being, I'm above all this kind right. of stuff. Um, there's a little bit of humor. We have a little bit of uh, uh, John C. McGinley in there, if you sure. remember him from Scrubs. Uh, we also have another character, and I can't think of his name, and I met him at Comic-Con. I feel really Oh, you, you talking about... Uh Michael Rooker? Yes, Michael Rooker. He's in this for he, six seconds. Yeah, for six seconds. And I was really happy to see him. I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen him in a movie in a long time. They put him and in the trailer, though, to make sure you know he's in there. And yeah, that's all. That's about all his role. Yeah. Um, you also have Shaggy from, from Scooby-Doo in this movie, basically. Is that, uh, who was that? I don't know, the guy who, the stoner guy who was just eating Scooby snacks through the entire movie. Oh, yeah, movie. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was basically having a cartoon character dropped into the middle yeah. of this. Well, a lot of times when you have horror movies, uh, action horror movies like this, you have to throw in a comedic spin to it. Um, I really like the balance of it. Um, mm -hmm. I enjoy horror movies. I enjoy this uh, fast-paced morality type thing. Do I become the killer? Do I become the pacifist? Do I constantly look for a way out, or do I just hide? Um... A lot of the characters I thought were funny and entertaining. I didn't think there was a boring moment in this movie. Hmm. Um, what did you think? 
Um, I thought it was interesting what they were setting up with this morality tale of where do you throw your morals aside? Yeah. You know, do you do you decide we should we should start killing people now, or do you wait? Um, do you do you wait for it to become a battle royal? Um, where do your morals fall apart? My problem is. I did not care about a single person in this movie. Yeah. All of these people were worthless characters. <laughs> um, and they changed on a dime, like just with no reservation. Most of these characters, and this, the, the biggest problem with this movie, and John and uh, uh, Greg McLean is, he made the, the Darkness last year. Remember that one oh, star movie? Yeah, maybe? that was. Um, that's, his, that's his claim to fame right now. Uh. Um, he, it feels like he was reliant on gore and pseudo cinematic shots to overcome what was a really mediocre script in my opinion. Um, I thought that um, the movie was obvious where it was going the entire time. Like from opening scene, I knew where this movie was going. The, I could have plotted it out for you. Um, it was obvious as you start killing people off, boy, sure is lucky that our main characters are the ones that survive. Yeah. Isn't that something as this massacre's going on? Um, Nobody questions that they have an explosive implanted in their head when they start this job, that they get a, an implant put into their head. It's, they say it's because, oh, to keep you, a tracker from getting kidnapped. These people, it's office space. These people are in an office building. Well, the, I, if I'm going to a job and they say, oh, we also need to implant a chip into your head, no thank you. Well, the, they, they make it make sense a little they bit. They really they, don't. They say, oh, we're going to put this tracking device because a lot of people get kidnapped from our company. And that's the reason why they have the security team, so that they don't question why are we going to a facility that's surrounded by Mission armed Impossible Three the explained the explosives in your head much better than this <laughs> haphazard just throwing. It. Oh yeah, the, well retcon it and say we put chips in your head and tracking device. This disembodied voice that just the problem is that the movie was utterly predictable. Um, it followed in the same line as so many other movies and did nothing to veer. I would agree with that. Um, I would whittle it down to three possibilities. One um, was the obvious one that we had. I was kind of hoping maybe they'd find a way where to live or yeah. maybe the surprise Also, like Hunger Games yeah. You wanted Hunger Games? I, I was thinking it was either going to be Hunger Games or it was going to be more like uh, Battle Royale. Yeah. Um, you know, where they find that loophole. Or the most obvious choice, which is, you know, what happens. And I don't want to say it. I already said too much. I mean, if you if you have any interest in seeing a movie, you'll know exactly what's happening when, yeah. you, when you sit down in your seat. Um, yeah, I, it just it, it frustrated me because I think that Gunn uh, is, has been living off of uh, one successful movie. And I think that this script was lazy. Was Darkness really that successful? No. Oh, okay. Not Gunn. Yeah, McLean did. did oh, okay, okay, Gunn, okay. the writer, you know, I mean, he helped on Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, okay. Um, you know, with his brother. Um, no, McLean has done uh, the Darkness and the Wolf Creek trilogy. If you love bad movies, <laughs> he's a great director of bad movies. And I think that this one is a pseudo movie of, it felt lazy, and it felt like he just, he was very happy to just, We'll just make it gory, and that'll make up for the fact that no one... I, I didn't care about a single person that lived or died in this movie. I, you had John C. McGinley and these, this alpha team of guys mm -hmm. that instantly turned, like, let's just start killing people. And you introduce things in this movie. Like, you introduce John C. McGinley at one point. He's leering at this girl through the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And at one point, she calls him a pervert, and he snaps. And they never explain that. Why would he snap about that? In the middle of this chaos, as everyone is being killed... Why would you introduce this fact that, don't call me a pervert. Okay, we're going to return this? Was this going to be something? No. Uh, we mentioned that, oh, not everyone has military training like you, Jeff. Yeah. And then that's never brought up again the rest of the movie. Like, okay, so why do you, you As introduce As a matter of fact, I things. questioned that, too. For a long time, I thought they were going to bring that up. And, and there was don't. one office person who was extreme pacifist and then at the last minute became... Well, and that's the thing, is yeah. that... That you, they betrayed what their character was. And you lecture somebody in one scene and then go against it in the next scene. I, I, the way I looked at this movie, though, was more like uh, Hardcore Henry. Really, the plot isn't much. It's the action. It's the fun. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, really, Battle Royale had did this better. I feel... But it still was a... I thought was a fun movie. I feel if you enjoy Saw... 
but you want less original ideas and characters, this is the movie for you. Oh. Beauty and the Beast is a no. remake and would have more originality to it than I, this movie did. I would doubt that. I would doubt this that. This movie they... was a paint-by-numbers kit of a movie. True, but, I mean, at least they had their own dialogue. Oh, yeah. Dialogue yeah. that had <laughs> massive holes in it and made no sense. Uh, I don't know. I, I did not care for this movie. I, I liked where it was setting up, but... Quickly, it fell apart for me. Uh, I think you and I are going to uh, yeah, differ widely so. on our opinions. <laughs> what did you end up giving I, this movie? I gave it a 3.5. I thought it was a fun movie. Yeah, I gave it one and a half, and I felt wow. generous with one and a half. It felt more like a one star, but I'll give it one and a half. Um, wow. It's a bad movie. It's or not it's good. a good movie, depending on who you're asking mm, at no. this table. You're defending, you're defending the man who brought you Wolf Creek and the Darkness and well. said, if you... If you <laughs> Don't want to watch Battle Royale, which is a better movie. You want to watch a really watered-down version of that? Watch this. Well, everybody has that one good thing that they do. Doesn't mean that they're good. All I'm the still time. waiting for Greg McLean's. <laughs> all right, I'm well. still waiting because <laughs> this was not it. Um, but let's uh, let's move on. Let's take a look back. Uh, we're going to take a look back for our movie throwback to a movie from 1987, kind of branching a little bit off of Beauty and the Beast, a movie about a man who who has his own special deformity. Yeah. Uh, he just wants to fall in love. He just wants the townsfolk to not fear him. And uh, it, is a, uh, it is a play off of the well-known story of Cyrano de Bergerac. I'm talking about Roxanne, starring Steve Martin, Daryl Hannah, Rick Rosovich, and Shelley Duvall, of course. Uh, if you're watching this trailer or if you know anything about Roxanne, you know that Steve Martin has a really big nose. Yeah, like I huge. said, I mean, this is a this is a takeoff of Cyrano de Bergerac. Um, and he, you know, he's a sweet guy. He's on the captain of the fire department. Um, he falls in love with Daryl Hannah. Who wouldn't in 1987? Um, she kind of has a thing for Rick Rosovich. She likes herself. Uh, what was his name in Top Gun? Was he Hollywood? You're no. Slider. Slider, slider, slider. <laughs> Dang it! Should know my call signs. Um, but she, she like because look, he's your, he's a, he's a good-looking guy. Rick Rosovich is, and so, but he's not much of a talker. No. And uh, and uh, you know, Steve Martin, he likes to write poetry, and, and he's a romantic, and uh, and it is the story of him trying to help uh, Rick Rosovich get Daryl Hannah to fall in love with him, and along the way, he falls in love, and it's a whole beautiful story. Yeah. And it is. Built on the charm of Steve Martin. Yeah, uh, pretty much. The entire movie could not have been done well without Steve Martin. I think uh, when he came out with this, this was, uh, he used to only do extreme wacky. And this was his transition to trying to be more of a serious actor where he had an intelligent role. Um, but I mean, he was, I mean, this, the, the, he did have a lot of slapstick in this movie. A lot movie, of slapstick. But it would go from slapstick to sweet. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't just stay in the slapstick. He did. He had, he developed a character really well. Made was, you care about this guy. It was the first movie where I saw Pacor. Uh -huh. <laughs> and his that character is his, his character is sympathetic. Yeah. Um, and sweet, but he's strong. It's not like sympathetic. Like, oh, I feel bad for that guy. What a sad sack. Yeah. Like, no, he's he 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 had strength to him. He doesn't shy away from. His obvious physical thing. I mean, there's the the classic scene from this movie is in the bar where he has a certain amount of time to make as many jokes about his nose as he can. I yep. mean, that's a great scene. And he uh, he doesn't just make the jokes. He also takes well, what angle are you saying it from? So right. he's like scientifically, and so then he just takes it. Brilliant and scene. It in. Good scene. Um, the only thing I didn't like about the movie is the typical '80s ending where it was all wrapped up, kind of. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. Everything up to that point where you're like, oh, really? She just kind of fell in love all of a sudden after he deceived her all this time? Well, that's cool. <laughs> you bet. Yeah, I really enjoy this movie. This is like Steve Martin working at the height of his powers. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, this era right here between this and planes, trains, and automobiles, like, yeah, give me this Steve Martin all day long. Yeah. Um, really great. And and Rick Rosovich is really good in this movie. He's kind of wooden and didn't do a whole lot else. I mean, he's he kind of went into a very secondary, tertiary role with people. But I, I read that he's, like, one of the nicest people to work with. He's yeah? just a nice guy. Like, a That's real awesome. nice guy. Maybe he'll be in the Top Gun sequel. Who knows? I, uh, oh, the reboot? Yeah, is there going to be a reboot? I heard that? it's a sequel. I heard Maverick is uh, oh boy. teaching Top Gun. Eventually, they're going to run out of reboots, and they're just going to have to reboot. I those. know that Iceman like, wants to be in this movie mm. if he can fit in the pie, in the cockpit. 
Nice. <laughs> love, you, love you, Val Kilmer. Uh, so, yeah, Roxanne, go check it out. It's definitely yeah. worth a watch. Good if, movie. if you haven't seen it uh, in years, or it's, you know, it's a. I can't say it's a movie you can show the kids because there's some there's a little language in there. Get yeah, the mute get the mute button ready. Uh, over thirteen, I'd say over. 13. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, we'll say it's a PG. It might be a PG yes. thirteen movie. <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's take a look ahead really quick before we go to the weekend of March. 31st, we have three movies that will be out on the marquee that weekend. The first one is the new animated movie starring the voice talents of Mr. Alec Baldwin. Talk about Boss Baby. All right. I like, uh, I'm a big sucker for this because anytime you reference uh, Glengarry Glen Ross, uh -huh. I'm in. And he, when he says, put that cookie down, <laughs> cookies are for closers, I'm in. I'll see it. Uh, it, the movie might be terrible, but that scene will get me. <laughs> uh, the second movie we have is a movie that has been advertised for, uh, it feels like a millennium. We're finally getting it, The Zookeeper's Wife. A movie oh. that was originally, I believe, supposed to come out last year, because I know there was hype about Jennifer, uh, Jessica Chastain for Oscar yeah. for this role. Um, it's finally coming out uh, about a lady who uh, owns a zoo and takes in um, Jews in Poland. I, as the Nazis are moving in. I do remember seeing previews of this last spring. Yeah. It, crazy. Yeah. It just We've been seeing fell. it for a while. And so it's finally coming out March 31st. And last but not least, we have a, uh, a film based off of an animated film. Uh, we have Ghost in the Shell. I'm, you know what? I watch this trailer and I get excited, but they changed the plot to make it seem like it's not at all like the original, even but though they some... cut many scenes from it that look absolutely yeah, perfect. I, I, I know you have. I just finished re-watching the original this yeah. week, uh, the animated. And yeah, and I'm watching going, oh yeah, that's the scene from the trailer. Like, yeah. spot on. Yep. There's a lot of moments that I've seen, like, yeah, that, look, that it looks, looks good. gorgeous, but they have a tagline at, that makes it seem like, well, this is a RoboCop, which the original Ghost on the Shell or the manga or the sequels. Lots of sequels. It's, it's all about the corporation working together against a bad guy, not the corporation being a bad guy. I've seen that movie over and over again. Yeah. I hope I'm wrong. I started digging into the sequels now. They're all on Hulu. Yeah. So just been watching, started on the sequels now. There's, I think, four. Four, uh, four Ghost on the Shell movies? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, plus the series. And the Ghost on the Shell standalone complex and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah so I'm, I'm actually trying to devour as much as I can in the next week. The movies, uh, the first movie is totally different, I think, from the TV series yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, just... so I, I'm really intrigued by this. Uh, it's getting a lot of heat because Scarlett Johansson has been cast in a, yeah. of course, another whitewashing uh, casting, but she looks great, and I actually I, think I she actually looks like the character. You didn't buy that Matt Damon could have uh, thought he was saved, great. Uh, Absolutely, he he <laughs> built and defended the Great Wall. That's what I'm saying. Thank you, Matt Damon. You <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, before we leave you, of course, we have to thank our sponsor, the Palace Marcus Theaters. Thank you for sponsoring our show. We do appreciate it. We love ourselves some Palace. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking forward to going in there this weekend to see such films as Power Rangers, Chips, and Life. I'm looking forward to Life. Yeah? A lot, yeah. Yeah? Um, it looks like uh, I, like what the Aliens reboot should look like. To, to me, me? To me, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah? I'm hoping. I know this isn't true. Heart and Hearts. They announced the Venom standalone movie for a few years from, from oh. now. I want to say that this is the backdoor intro to Venom. That, that the alien symbiote that they find in this movie turns out to be Venom. That would be cool. You watch the whole movie and find out, no, you actually watched a Marvel superhero yeah. film the entire... Well, this would be the first Marvel supervillain. Yes. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because I know be they announced the Venom movie. Yeah. We have Spider-Man coming out this summer. I want to tie in. I want Tom Holland to show up at the end as Peter Parker or... Whatever you need to do, I don't care if Sam Jackson has to show up. Somebody make this. I know it's not. I know it's no, not it's part not, of it. But you could wish it. I, in my mind, I, I'll think it is the entire yeah. time. So, <laughs> anyways, enough gibberish. It is time for us to go. So until next week, I'm Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching. <laughs>